the man heading up Ontario's COVID-19 vaccine distribution task force, retired General Rick Hillier. Uh, General, great to have you back on the program. Always thanks for your service to the country. Um, great news today. Let's not sugarcoat that. This is better news than we all thought. But clearly something changed here over the weekend. I spoke to Major General Fortin. He was ex still expecting vaccines to arrive mid-January. Suddenly they're arriving next week. When did you find about out about the accelerated schedule? Uh, I found out about it today, Evan. And yeah, it is good news. And I don't care what caused the change or from where that change is coming. If we're going to get uh, vaccines earlier to Ontario so we can start doing our work with those vaccines in hand, so to speak, that's good news. We're, we're delighted to hear it. Yeah, it's great news. But um, and, and something changed, and we'll speak to Anita and Ann in a minute. Um, but boy, uh, you found out today, the provinces, I guess some of them found out last night, how many of this 249,000, I hear they're going to arrive in tranches. How many is your province where you're running the show there expecting to get in this first shipment next week? Yeah, well, we expect to get, this is what we're hearing from Ottawa, we expect to get about 90,000 of those 249,000 doses come to Ontario. And uh, I had said from the start when I arrived there, one of the things I'd like to get are some dribs and drabs. Now, this is a bit more than that of the vaccines to come in and let us proof the system and let us run it through all the things that we have to do. And then when they arrive in large amounts, we'd be even more ready for that. And so this is really good news from every perspective. Get the vaccines. We can proof our systems. We can make sure we're ready to go. And then when they arrive in larger numbers, we can roll them out even more efficiently than we'll be able to do at the start here with this slightly smaller amount. Yeah, this is a fragile vaccine, and you've talked about this today, General. Uh, negative 80, it requires. Um, it will go, tell us, can you just walk us through, so it'll go to one, the, one of these 14 sites. Will you be able to then offload it and distribute it to long-term care homes or to rural areas, or is it too fragile? This is a kind of, you got to come to it. It ain't coming to you. Well, uh, first of all, we learn more about the vaccine every day from its handling and uh, characteristics, that's for sure. And we're all treading lightly because we want to do exactly what is right and not take any risks with the vaccine that we might make it ineffective. And so the initial vaccines that come in will probably go to the point where we receive them. We've identified those for the drug uh, company Pfizer. And there we will have a vaccination site and we will be able to vaccinate those initially who can come to those vaccination sites and obviously we're really targeting the vulnerable populations in those hot zones, those lockdown zones, and those areas that have been difficult. So, for example, Evan, we wanted to go into long-term care homes, congregate living, where there are communal kitchens, where there are more than one person per room, uh, homes that have had challenges in the past nine months and tragedies, and perhaps homes where the, the province of Ontario has had to intervene. We may not be able to do that right away. We're, we think that things will change over time. But what we will be able to do is get the people who work in those homes, and that's how, how the virus gets carried into the homes, get the people who work there, the people who work in the kitchen, the personal care workers, the health care workers, and those essential visitors for the care of the, the people that are residing there, right. get them to come to the vaccination center and get vaccine, uh, a vaccine. And that should increase the, the safety margin for the people there, usually to start with. So it's all good news, and we'll get at those vulnerable populations we just might have to do some of them at the vaccination site where the Pfizer uh, vaccine right. arrives initially. Right, and I, so and that means if you're in a rural area as well, you either wait or you wait for, I guess, one, a more stable vaccine like the Moderna if that gets approved. You talk about the phased in approach of the province of Ontario. How are these phases going to work in terms of managing people's expectations as to when they might get the vaccination? Evan, first of all, yeah, we have to manage the expectations. The people have to understand we're looking at a months long vaccination program, certainly comprising most of 2021, probably all of it in the first phase, which is going to be about 2.4 million doses of the vaccine, a combination of Pfizer and Moderna. It's going to take us two or three months, probably three months in the year, in the first part of 2021 to get to that phase, to do the vulnerable populations, to do the healthcare workers. And in some cases, those populations mesh as, as when I'm talking about the long term care homes and then roll on to when we're getting more vaccines and larger numbers, different kinds of vaccines from the first two. And we get to the other priorities and the majority of the population. And then our last phase, once we've gotten the majority of that done, 
is to make it a routine, steady state operation, just like the flu vaccine. At the front part, right. we're going to have normal vaccination sites and we're going to have special vaccination sites like in those long-term care homes. The second part, we'll see some of that. The last part, we'll be back to normal vaccination sites. You'll be able to go to the doctor or to the pharmacy or wherever you go now for your flu shot and be able to get that vaccine. Right. And that's what we're aiming to make happen. I mean, obviously, if, if more vaccines come online, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, the great news is, I guess there would be an accelerated process, but you can only make a timeline on, on what you know. Just just last question so for you, General Hillier. When do you think, I'm just, just from a historic point of view, when do you think the first jab in the arm takes place? Who, when does that first Canadian uh, get that first vaccine, in your view? You know, having a lot of variables to decide that, and I'm not going to guess that. I mean, Health Canada has not yet approved the vaccine. We don't right. have our hands on a single vaccine yet. We're, we're not 100% sure when we'll get the, the limited number as a trial uh, in the next week or so. Uh, and so I'm not going to guess. We get the vaccines, that initial swath, that initial 90,000. I said to the Premier today and, and to the ministers, you know, uh, my recommendation would be we make ACE slowly. Yes, we want to vaccinate people quickly, but we want to proof the system so that getting it right now at the front end will mean that we'll be able to be much more efficient and therefore much quicker when we get the bulk of the vaccines coming in in the months to follow. And I think that's what we're going to do. We'll be quick, though, nonetheless. And this is great news, as you said. This is wonderful news. Yeah. We're waiting for this vaccine, and it makes it a little bit more tolerable that we can still wear our masks and not touch our face and wash our hands and stay away from people and stay home unless you really have to go out makes perhaps that a little bit yeah. more tolerable over the Christmas and New Year's season. And I commend the people to do that. I'm going to do it. Uh, all right, General, make haste slowly. I like it. General Hillier, thanks for your work and taking the time. And uh, we look forward to some, some more good news. Thank you, sir. Evan, always a pleasure with you. All right, that is General Rick Hillier.